Morning, Yannick. Uh, yeah. where, where, where are you at right now in Madrid? And I'm actually in Berlin. Ah, in Berlin. So, um, <laughs> I am. I am one of those guys who's stranded in Berlin, and uh, I mean, after all, you know, non-refundable flights. Uh, and I mean, there is still <laughs> there is still stuff happening. So uh, last night, I was actually also at the uh, I31 hotel. Uh, yeah. There was a small event organized. Um, my colleague Neville spoke about uh, how AI um, can help you to reach revenue nirvana. So that was super interesting. And I mean, you mentioned it. You know, there's still a few things going on here in Berlin. So um, of course, a bit chaotic uh, to reorganize my entire schedule, obviously. But um, there's a few good things happening. Um, of course, it's a bit of shame that ITV was cancelled because we also had uh, something very interesting to share uh, with the organizations we were about to meet. Um, but um, then even better than uh, you give us now the, the opportunity to do all of this online. Um, so I'm, I'm super happy and of course I would have liked to, to share a milkshake with all of you guys, but uh, I'm sure we get, uh, get another chance to do that. Just come to Cologne on your way back and here we go. <laughs> yeah, I will for sure soon. So just a quick uh, organizational question. Is your colleague joining us as well? Uh, so Neville is right now in the audience. Uh, he's in his own hotel room right now. Um, <laughs> so uh, I mean, at some point, of course, uh, when it comes to questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to add him to the panel um, uh, participant uh, so that he can also uh, answer some questions if you want. But uh, in the end, I mean, it's, it makes not too much sense to have two people doing one presentation. So uh, I do that. I do that part. But of course, Neville is also available um, if there are if there are a few questions. Okay, perfect. Okay. So the way we want to approach this uh, for each session today is that uh, you do a quick intro to yourself, like in a camp, which we do with HSC. So you do a quick intro to yourself. We are we're from. Uh, second one would be a sixty-second pitch uh, on. Beyond price, explaining what you do, and then we can dive into whatever you prepared and, and you can share your slides. Mm -hmm. And after that, we will go into our little buggy Q&A and &A whatever and ask a weird question and opening it up to the audience, obviously, as well. Mm -hmm. So if we still have time for questions because who knows what comes from the audience, um, right? Or who knows, uh, he might go for 45 minutes and we have to stop him. <laughs> well, if he has cool news, then you know, off you go. Yeah. So, Yannick, the, the stage is yours. Uh, in, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I'm Yannick Heidmüller, actually. So, the name gives it away a bit, maybe. Uh, I'm from Germany. And if it's not the name, then maybe my accent gives it away. Um, I joined Beyond Price a year ago, and uh, I'm mainly responsible for the Dach market, um, but really also um, responsible for the expansion because we're in a very uh, interesting situation at Beyond Price right now. Um, if you want me to give like a short 60 seconds pitch um, about what we are actually doing as a company, um, not sure if it's going to be 60 seconds. Um, I keep it short. <laughs> so. Beyond Price, we are a revenue management system um, and we are based in Spain, in Salamanca actually. We started seven years ago as a rate shopping tool. So back then it was really about providing our customers with the most uh, valuable data about the market, about their competitors, um, also about rate parity for example, you know, so that they could just take the most informed decision um, when it comes to their pricing and then over time we developed a full functioning revenue management system with all the functionalities you would expect from a revenue management system but we actually also want to take the whole thing a step further by shifting the value proposition from what you would actually expect from a revenue management system to a new level. Now and that's uh, basically also what I want to introduce today uh, because that's something uh, that for sure you haven't seen before. That's something that's very new and that's uh, really also the, what I want to share with, uh, with new organizations who don't know us yet. Um, because after all, we are only starting in the markets. We're very big in the Spanish-speaking world, but outside of Spain and Latin America, um, we are still the new kid on the block. So um, that's, that's what we want to change. Cool. So, did, did you did you prepare anything you would like to share from your screen? Of course, of course I did. Stage is yours. So let me just check if I find this night right now again. Okay, so then right now you should see a slide that says "Leading and Delivering the Future of Revenue Strategy." So I don't I don't want to make this a sales presentation. I don't want to make this a product demo. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about any features that we offer, uh, but of course I would like to give you a quick idea of who we are as a company, where we're coming from. 
uh, and leading and delivering the future of revenue strategy. That's actually our mission. And we really want to emphasize the word strategy here because after all, in revenue management, it's all about achieving long-term goals and not thinking uh, short-term. And there we really want to be the partner for all of our customers to help them achieve this and of course provide them with the right tool to do so. Yeah. And I mean, this was already part of a bit of the pitch I just gave you, but um, you know, just to give the people an idea of who we are. You know, seven years ago we started, we have around 2,000 clients right now. Not all of these are revenue management system clients. Quite a lot of these are still with our rate shopping tool. Um, so that's how we started seven years ago. And then around three years ago, we introduced the full functioning revenue management system to the market. We have very high renewal rates, which is something we're very proud of. Uh, offices in Madrid, where I'm usually based also. Um, but also we have people in Barcelona and Salamanca, where we have our head office. And then we're also in Latin America, in Mexico City, where we have a very nice office, and in Bogota in Colombia. So very dominated in the Spanish-speaking world. And you see also here 30-plus countries, mostly Spanish-speaking so far. We have been opening a few new markets also here in Europe now. Um, but we're still at a rather early stage uh, when it comes to that. We were around 60 people now at the end of 2019, but um, a very interesting moment for us because we also just finished an investment round. So um, we're doubling our development team right now and also growing the rest of the team. So very, very interesting stage for the company right now. Yeah, but as I said, after all, I don't want to make this um, a demo or, um, or a pitch because um, also I think nobody really wants to see just another RMS entering the market and doing everything the same way everybody else is doing it. So I want to talk a bit about something um, that is very exciting and it's a new perspective to what a revenue management system can do. And then of course, we, we are talking about the value proposition of a revenue management system. And I already said that in, in, in the introduction that basically we want to shift the value proposition from what's currently perceived as a value proposition towards a bigger level. Yeah. So if we're looking at what the Rev, uh, what the value proposition of an RMS is. And of course, the answers to this might differ a bit, but in the end, there are a few key points uh, that always comes down to. So a revenue management system is supposed to help you predict the demand, of course, and then use all the data to sell the right product at the right time to the right customer at the right price. You know, this is pretty much common sense. And of course, if you're managing to do this, you can optimize your revenue per available room. So rev power optimization is probably the key KPI any revenue management system would want to increase. And that's obviously also something we are doing. So this is really an above the line KPI that any RMS is working on. But then of course, there are some other benefits of an RMS. Um, automation, obviously, you know, technology has made great steps forward uh, over the last decades. So only just the forecasting alone, you know, that's, that's, there's no need to do this manually anymore. Uh, you can make use of all the data and automate a great deal of what you used to do manually. So, and that of course leads to very high staff efficiency. And this is interesting because of course it leaves the revenue manager much more time to work on a strategy and execute a strategy. Yeah, so this is pretty much also a big part of the value proposition of an RMS to free your staff from the manual work, from the operations and enable them to work strategically, yeah? So this is pretty much probably any RMS you would talk to would tell you that this is what they're doing. Um, and this is also what we are doing. But um, as I said, we want to take this a bit to the next level. So we were looking at other goals hotel organizations might have, yeah? And of course, here again, the answers to the question, what goals do you have as a hotel organization can also differ quite a lot. Um, and I want to focus on two things here today. Yeah, so any hotel organization should have as one of the goals to have a large base of loyal guests. Yeah, customer retention, of course, is a, is a big goal for any hotel organization because what happens if you actually are able to have a large base of loyal guests, of course, then the average guest will have a higher customer lifetime value. They will have more stays which means that they are bringing more revenue to your hotel, obviously. And uh, after all, also loyal guests, guests that are, they are coming back, they are more likely to book directly on your website. You know, there's less customer acquisition costs involved, actually, because you don't constantly have to acquire completely new guests because you're retaining the ones you already had. 
And obviously, when you are able to lower your customer acquisition costs, this has a positive impact on your profitability. Yeah, so these are basically the two things um, that I want to talk about a bit today. Uh, how can an RMS actually help you to increase your brand loyalty and thereby also drive your profitability? When we're looking at brand loyalty, um, there are a few factors and there's actually a few studies about this. Uh, so really scientifically uh, proven, um, like one key study was basically from the UK where they were analyzing 664 hotels and they were identifying the factors that are impacting brand loyalty. And this is where it becomes very interesting. Um, so there are basically five factors that have been identified. Room quality and service quality, obviously. I mean, this is not a surprise. And this is really in the hands of the hotelier to make sure that the room quality and also the service quality is good. Cleanliness, obviously, and brand image also. So again, in the hands of the hotelier to make sure that rooms are clean and they are actually creating a cool image around their brand, whether it doesn't matter if it's an independent hotel or a chain. And then there's one last point. And um, that's, of course, the most interesting one for us as a revenue management system, because this is price fairness. And this is, uh, out of these five factors, also, for another reason, the most interesting one, because the studies have found that this factor cannot be compensated by any other factor, which means it does not matter how great your room quality is. It doesn't matter how great your service quality is. If your guest does not perceive the price as fair, this guest will not come back. Yeah. So it's really all of these factors are contributing, but if you get the price fairness wrong, chances that the guest will come back and become a loyal guest are very, very low. Yeah. And then, of course, as an RMS, after all, pricing, that's our thing. So we say, hey, price fairness, that's something where we can actually do something about this and do our part to increase the brand loyalty uh, towards the hotel. So... I think it's helpful maybe to put a bit of a definition around this. Um, after all, price fairness is highly related to the quality that you're offering, but also about the perception of quality. Yeah. So it's important that you're meeting the customer expectations when it comes to what they are paying for, what they are perceiving, what they're actually, um, what they're living at your hotel. So the degree to which expectations are met uh, when they acquire the product and also, of course, during the stay, and after this day, and value for money. Value for money is uh, really one of the key points uh, because everybody will put the experience they had into relation with the money that they pay for it. Um, if not during the stay, then they will do it after the stay. So this is super important. And of course, quality is um, a relative concept a bit. It always depends also a bit on the, uh, on the customer you're having. Yeah, so it also varies a bit uh, between, between different segments that we have um, because there are different um, perceptions of quality and different things that are important when it comes to quality. A bit more context. Um, so basically, I mean, we all know that uh, the booking behavior has changed a bit over the last decades um, just based on the fact already that there's so much more information available. So the decision-making process when booking a room, um, there is a lot of information available to anyone booking a room. Um, and of course, we're in a very competitive market. There's a lot of options out there. Uh, so of course, as a hotel, you have to make sure that you're really offering a good experience. Yeah? Also compared to alternative products, which are your competitors on the market. Then of course, we have multiple information tools uh, for users. There is a lot of different OTAs uh, out there. Um, there's a lot more information in general. Uh, we have um, um, websites like TripAdvisor, obviously, where you can also get an idea of what you can expect in terms of quality. Um, and then, of course, there are also some statistics uh, that I want to share with you. Because, um, and this is, of course, not a surprise. Um, travelers are willing to pay up to 38% more for accommodations with positive reviews. Because there they know, hey, that we can actually expect something great. And also, it was found out that 76% of travelers would pay more for a hotel with better online reputation score. Yeah. So it's not only that you are you want to pay more, but um, you, you know, like it's also about the reputation score that you're looking at. And um, this is this is a great correlation. That's super interesting. So this is a bit of the context behind this. And then, of course, uh, and this will become super interesting. Um, because obviously you have uh, in this competitive environment, uh, we can have different scenarios. So what I want to do with you right now is basically to 
uh, we'll walk through a few scenarios and see um, what would be the factor that influences the decision uh, to book a room in a certain hotel. Yeah, so this is the first concept, uh, concept A, where we have four hotels. You see them on the right. Yeah, and these four hotels, they all have exactly the same characteristics. They are all four-star hotels. They are all in the city center with an access to the subway, and they all have a room size of 20 square meters, and they all have the exact same price. So which hotel, where are you booking your room? Well, it's pretty much a 25% uh, chance for all of these hotels, you know, but of course, this is not a situation you would typically find on the market. Um, so let's look at a different concept where we're changing one of the parameters. Yeah, so again, same category, um, same characteristics. We have very similar products, uh, only the images differ a bit, but they are all providing a very good, uh, a good image. And the price is still exactly the same. The thing that has changed here is the reputation. Yeah, so if you, as a guest, you want to book a room and you have this information available and you see, hey, Hotel D has the highest online reputation, then of course the probability for you as a hotel to sell your room is largely determined by the online reputation. Yeah, after all, as a guest in this case, you are most likely to uh, to book a room at Hotel D with uh, the highest online reputation, while all of the other factors are staying the same. Of course, we can have uh, different situations. So in this case, uh, for example, the online reputation for all of these properties is exactly the same. But uh, in this case, the price is different. And uh, I mean, this is, this is pretty obvious. And in this case, the price would de determine the sales probability. Yeah. Then, of course, we can have another scenario where there's not only one factor that is different, but in this case, it's a combination of two factors. Yeah. So in this scenario, again, the price is exactly the same. But what we find is that, again, the online reputation is different. Yeah, again, Hotel D has the highest online reputation. And we also see that there are different services available. Yeah, so the characteristics are still the same. City center, subway access, and room size are still the same. But you also see that some hotels offer free Wi-Fi, for example, or a spa, or a spa and a pool. You know, so in this case, the sales probability for you to sell your room would be determined by a combination between the objective quality of your hotel and the online reputation. Yeah. Again, this is a situation you would rarely find online because in this case, all of the hotels are having the exact same price. So this is actually the most realistic situation that we would find online when trying to book a room. You have four different hotels. They have four different prices. They all have a different online reputation and they also provide different services which means that in this case, obviously, the sales probability is determined by a combination of all of these three factors. It's the objective quality, it's your online reputation, which is, so to say, the subjective quality, but then, of course, also the price. Yeah. So this is the most typical situation that we find. And there, of course, we as an RMS, um, where we were wondering, okay, what can we make out of the situation? Yeah. So we decided to calculate and quantify the overall the overall quality of a hotel yeah so this is the objective quality so one of the examples um, we just gave were for example was the room size 20 square meters in all of the hotels but maybe you have uh, your standard double room has 20 your competitor has 25 you know so this is one of the objective quality factors but then of course also available services um, 24 7 room service yes or no for example Customer segmentation, of course, it depends on what kind of guest you are, whether you're staying for business or for leisure. Um, your expectations of quality would differ. So that's, of course, very important to take into account. And then your online reputation, we just saw that after a while, we want to make sure that you are meeting the guest expectations and that this is also reflected in the online reputation. So what we did, and um, this is then, of course, the solution we're offering to all of this yeah the hqi which is short for the hotel quality index uh, so we were looking for a way to quantify um all of this the objective quality the subjective quality and then of course put it into relation with the price in order to in the end achieve price fairness because remember that's where we're coming from in this presentation in the session so the hotel quality index it's a score that shows the overall quality of any property in the market. So it's not only your own hotel, 
but it's also the competitors that you have defined in your comp set. There are multiple parameters uh, about hotel services and facilities that are analyzed, of course, and taken into account. We're looking at your client mix and we're looking at the number of reviews um, so that we can, in the end, define a final score of the objective quality. Then we're looking at the online reputation, which is more related to the subjective quality, obviously. And um, this is a score then that we update once a month, you know, because sometimes your reputation online might change a bit, but it's usually not from one day to the other. So uh, updating this once a month makes sure that we are still reflecting the, the actual quality of the hotel. And then, of course, as an RMS, we want to use this in our algorithm and um, use this for our pricing recommendations. Yeah, so for our forecast, um, we are using the sales probability to sell a certain room at a certain price, considering the quality of your hotel and the quality of your competitors. Yeah, and this really allows you to compare yourself with any property on the market and make sure that your strategic positioning is always on point. So this might sound a bit overwhelming, uh, Daniel. You are very small on my screen, but uh, you seem you, you might look. I think you look a bit confused. I'm not sure. So uh, maybe let me illustrate it a bit. Um, and uh, this is maybe a slide you were hoping for uh, after the last one. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You know, so. The hotel quality index, uh, it is an index that you see on the right and you see on the left basically here on this axis, this is the price of your competitors and yourself. And down here you see the hotel quality score. The hotel quality score uh, reflects the integral quality, so a combination. And just for you to know, this is also the only thing I'm going to show live in the tool in a second, so we can have a closer look actually on what the graph looks like. Uh, so the hotel quality score, uh, a combination of the objective quality and your online reputation. Yeah, and then we place all of the hotels in this graph basically based on what their quality is and what their price is. And we also show you the probability for each of these properties to sell their room at the price they currently have, considering also the quality they are offering. Yeah, so, and this is really... And this is, I can't emphasize this enough. The goal with this hotel quality index is to make sure that the guest is paying the price for the quality that this guest is expecting. Yeah. So meeting the guest expectation of quality with the price they're paying, that's how we can achieve price fairness. And that's how we can contribute as an RMS to increasing brand loyalty. And that's how we increase the customer lifetime value. Yeah, and this is the relationship that I introduced in the very beginning. Increasing customer lifetime value drives down your customer acquisition costs and that drives your profitability. So let me show you what it looks like in the tool. And I'll just zoom in a bit. So I assume you can still share my screen, otherwise you just wave at me. Um, what we see here is a comp set. And uh, you see again on the left, you see the different prices yeah, from 100 to 500 because you also have one competitor here who's a very high price. And then down here, you see the hotel quality score. This is actually a score that ranges, ranges between 1 and 1,000. Yeah, although it's very unlikely that uh, any hotel would have a score of 1 or 1,000. So typically, hotels are between 300 and 750 because it's really a combination of a lot of different factors. And what you see here is obviously the price of all your competitors. And the size of the bubble indicates the probability to sell the room. Yeah? The bigger the bubble, the higher the sales probability. What we see, for example, competitor one has the highest quality by far within this comp set. But the price compared to the other options available is not that high. So the probability for this competitor to sell the room is pretty high. Yeah? If we look at your own hotel, this, for example, would be the bubble that is uh, related to your current price. Um, so your current price would be 255 euros, for example, uh, taking into account your hotel quality score of 558 and comparing it with all of the other competitors. This would mean that your chance to sell your room is 15.85%. If you follow our recommendations, because after all, we are, of course, we're not only looking at the quality and so on and so forth, but of course, we're taking into account all the PMS data, like your occupancy. 
Um, so we would recommend you in this case to increase your price to 272 euros. Uh, this would lower your sales opportunity, your probability to, to make the sale, uh, but at the same time, it would still optimize your overall ref bar. Yeah. So this is what it looks like in action. You also see, for example, competitor two, which has a very high price, but not the highest quality. Uh, so for him, obviously, chance to sell the room would be quite low. And then yeah, I, I see you're already watching the time. So let me just uh, finish with the very last slide. Because uh, after all, in, this, in the beginning, I said we want to shift the value proposition of a revenue management to a higher level. Uh, so, of course, the, the starting point of the value proposition is a ref optimization, and every RMS is doing that. Then, of course, you can automate a lot of things so you become more efficient and you have more time for strategy. But if you want to really bring this to a larger level, um, then for us, this is really about also increasing the brand loyalty towards your brand and thereby drive the profitability. And that's something we can only really achieve if we are making sure that the prices that the guest is paying is perceived as fair, while still at the same time, of course, optimizing your ref bar. So that's it. So these are my contact details uh, for anyone who's interested to find out more, of course. Um, drop me an email. And uh, now I hope that we still have one or two minutes for questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> it's so great that I brought in the experts. You know? <laughs> but we have two or three minutes left. Uh, Lena will check the online requests if there's yes. any. And uh, Iris, you had a question. Yeah, super interesting um, presentation, uh, Yannick. I think there's like a lot of uh, truth in, in in what you're saying, and I and I think um, as well like um, in my previous role from an analytics uh, perspective, we've seen this a lot as well. Now, what I think what would be really interesting to me and most likely as well for people out there is like what data sources are you using to um, get to this to this information which you are then combining. Yeah, so um, I mean, the simple answer is booking.com. Um, after all, I mean, we started as a rate shopping tool, so obviously um, we are also scrapping the rates of the competitors that we use booking.com as the main data source. And uh, interestingly enough, last night uh, we attended um, a presentation of Customer Alliance and they were sharing a bit where most of the online reviews are coming from and it's still more than 50% of all reviews are left on booking.com, so this is really the source where there's the, the most information available, and that's also where we're getting um, the online reputation from. Uh, so it's the main source for us um, is Booking.com, really, uh, to, to make use of all the data. Because, I mean, they and just have the most data. And, and when it then comes to the different um, segmentations, as in customer types and whatnot, like how granular is the data you're getting? Because this um, has, like, a large effect on, on what you're showing, right? Yeah, obviously. I mean, segmentation, you know, I mean, after all, segmentation, of course, is one of the most things in revenue management. Uh, what we started, uh, the way we started basically with this was a very long term study uh, when it comes to different preferences, uh, when it comes to different services, uh, because as I said, different um, services or different quality factors are important to different kinds of segments. There we are pretty granular. Of course, uh, if we would do, if we would start the same study, Today, it might be a bit more granular because after all, we started this six years ago. Um, but of course, we're constantly improving this. Um, the, the beauty is that, of course, uh, we are extracting all of this information on the objective quality. But in the end, you can also, uh, as a user, in the end, redefine or adjust it a bit. You know, If you know, for example, that you have a lot of business travelers, maybe the speed of your Wi-Fi is more important than in another destination. Yeah, so you can also, within the tool, then uh, adjust um, how good your Wi-Fi speed is compared to your competitors. You're very, so you're very flexible. And of course, if you know your segments well, after all, you have to know also who your, who your guests are and who you're retargeting. And then you are able to also make some adjustments within the tool to make sure that this is reflecting uh, your client mix in the best possible way. Are you planning to bring in like um, um, data from review tools like TripAdvisor, Review Pro, whatnot? Because I mean, for example, you're just saying like if you know your segmentation well, if it's business traveler, but then the data you're receiving from um, Booking.com might not 
mm. give you um, the granularity yeah. on the reviews, which will yeah. help you target that better. So that is that is of course. I mean, that is on our roadmap, of course. I mean, that is uh, something that today we are not doing, but uh, obviously this is also something we're constantly developing further, and uh, we also know that that would add a bit more value even uh, yeah. to the whole thing if we have more granularity of data. So that's obviously on the roadmap. It's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, it is going to happen. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Susa? Yannick, yes, a very interesting presentation. Thank you for that. Um, just one question. How do you find out what price a guest is willing to pay? Are you tracking any sort of website data, demand data to find out where the price sensitivity lies? I mean, at what point of time would you kind of like kill the pickup in the hotel? <laughs> and the reply in 30 seconds because we are already past your time. Ooh. Uh, okay, so uh, let me let me try. Uh, price elasticity uh, maybe might be a keyword here. Um, after all, I mean, and this is of course we're not the only ones who can calculate price elasticity, but after all, this is very important. Um, killing the pickup. I mean, after all, this is a very, a revenue management systems are supposed to work long term. Um, you are not supposed to to work long term. So ideally, you would not have to kill your pickup in that sense. Um, but Sorry, can you repeat the question real quick? Um, yes, the question was, how do you find out how price sensitive each customer is? Are you tracking any website data to see at what point of time they drop off the booking? Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean, we're also tracking cancellations and no-shows, for example. And okay. after all, of course, um, we are, I mean, we started as a data company, uh, really as a rate shopper. So we are making sure to make use of as much data as we can uh, to get as many insights. Um, if you want a more detailed questions, to be honest, a uh, more detailed answer, to be honest, we would have to talk about this uh, after this. Um, so okay. I'll, just, I'll, I'll, just go, I'll just go back to this slide, that's my email address. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, I, I mean, I really hope that uh, I could give an idea of what we're doing and especially what we're doing differently. Um, and of course, if there are any follow-up questions by anyone from the audience or also from you from the panel feel free to reach out I'm um, happy to to answer any questions um, and uh, yeah then oh, we're already over time so yeah. I want to, <laughs> I so, want to uh, I mean, thank, you thank you very much for you and then we will uh, skip over to yes. back a very important one so where can we find you in the next days uh, today I will be at the student hotel Tomorrow I will be at uh, I-31 um, and on Friday I will be at my hotel. Um, so uh, there's of course a chance to meet up in person and schedule something, uh, organize something. Uh, on Friday I'm pretty much uh, uh, available for anyone who wants to meet up. But I'm in cool. Berlin. This week I'm in Berlin and then I'm in Madrid. Yeah, I would have loved, because I have some more questions as well, I would have loved to go longer or have your presentation a little bit shorter, do it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the both, you, you decide. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was a great start into the day. Uh, thank you for that. Obviously, the recording will be shared uh, as soon as we can. And um, yeah, Yannick, thanks for your time. I wish you a wonderful time in Berlin. Whomever thanks. you meet, uh, send them over to the online session uh, today. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you hopefully soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, thanks guys. Take thanks care. a lot. Bye. 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 Bye.